Oh, we're proud to welcome back Rich Kaplan, who has a brand new segment. He's going to focus on uh, autism awareness and uh, mental health in general. Mm -hmm. And uh, he lost uh, several pounds. He looks great. Mm -hmm. So welcome back, Rich, and uh, welcome with uh, your new segment. Thank you very much, Howie. Um, this week, I want to touch base on interaction in autism. Autism is a developmental disability that basically affects social interaction and cognitivity awareness in an individual. It's usually diagnosed early in children. It can also affect adults as well. I actually have a friend who has a brother with autism. His name is Ayal Kashani. He's been on the show. You know him as AJ. His brother Tyler has autism. He is lower functioning, but yet extremely alert and very, very analytical when it comes to numbers, sequences, and codes. A good example is his brother is very, very into aviation. He has developed an enormous in, in interest in aviation. There was an air show at McGuire Air Force Base where you go on board the aircraft, you actually get to go in the cockpit. Tyler, in a matter of not even minutes, figured out how to start the airplane's engines and almost did. Just by looking at the switches and being able to read what they represent through numbers and through analysis of code. Autistic people have a very different way of looking at the world from normal people. If anyone has ever seen the movie Rain Man with Tom Cruise and Dustin Hoffman, it was very heavily illustrated what autism is about in certain areas, how he was able to drop change and Hoffman immediately knew exactly how much money was on the floor without even looking. In Tyler's case, Tyler analyzes by actions around him and he basically mimics those actions and he memorizes the sequences of those actions. He is not very sociable. He does talk to those he knows only. My friend Julie knows him. He will have a small conversation with her. He is open with her. He's trusting of her. He's trusting of me, and of course he's trusting of I.L. himself, as well as others who he knows. Autis autistic people socialize differently and express themselves differently from normal people. In some situations, for example, at a funeral, we may show our sadness, we may show our emotions. An autistic person may express themselves through laughter and not realize that this is wrong. This is just their way of expression. Everybody reacts differently. The brain is a remarkable machine that we are only now beginning to come to understand. Everyone's brain is different. I myself, I have been diagnosed on the spectrum. I also have a chemical imbalance. Every brain is different. It is how we interpret the data from our brains through MRIs as well as through EEGs and through daily behaviors that we're able to come to an understanding of just what these illnesses such as autism are about. One of the criteria of interaction, which I actually have here, and I'm gonna get into it now. It's one of the things I hate about cellular technologies. Here we go. People on the autism spectrum vary enormously from each other, but they all have impaired social skills of one kind or another. Those social skills include social interactions such as sharing interests with other people, the use of nonverbal communications such as making eye contact, and the development and maintenance of relationships such as making friends. For example, some people in the autism spectrum are unwilling to make direct eye contact with other people. They may not respond where their name is called or when they are spoken to find it difficult to understand other people. For example, they may not be able to read facial expressions or body language. Are unaware of social conventions, appropriate social behavior. For example, they may not understand the importance of taking turns during a conversation. In some cases, I have seen people who are high-functioning autistic dominate conversations and not even realize they're doing this. They are just, you know, doing it for whatever reason. We've yet to determine what triggers it. 
An extremely directive and controlling or overly passive, for example, they may insist that everybody has to do what they want. They find it difficult to deal with conflict, for example, they may not understand the difference between being assertive and being aggressive. Are indifferent or adverse to physical contact and affection, for example, they may not like being hugged. Don't share objects such as toys and emotions such as excitement with other people. These are just some of the major examples and telltales of autism. As we delve further into this series, we're going to be learning a great deal about what autism is, forms of treatment. I will ultimately be hoping to have guests on the show, including a friend of mine who is extremely familiar with developmental disorders. She's extremely good at interacting. She mentors with the developmentally disabled and volunteers at Camp Anchor for her company at their annual dance. She's surrounded herself with autistic people and understands the illness as well as the doctors who are paid to treat it. This is one example of people who give their time to understand the many signs and the many elements of autism. I will get into peer mentoring. I will get into different programs for autism. I will also talk of organizations like some here on Long Island that actually deal with different aspects of autism. And I hope to make you aware in the coming weeks of just how big mental illness is in this country and how it is not necessarily a stigma or something we need to fear, but rather something we need to understand. It is through understanding that we are able to make that important connection and help a person who may be dealing with some form of mental illness, whether it be autism. There are so many different forms of mental illness out there, from depression to autism, to bipolar, to Tourette syndrome, I can go on and on. And gradually, my goal is to educate you on these different areas and how you can better familiarize yourself with it and more importantly, have an open dialogue with someone who may have an illness and even, if you so desire, help these individuals. It is through reaching out and taking the time to listen that you can truly make a difference in a person's life, whether they are indeed non-ill or ill. It is taking that step to work with them, to get to know them, and to give them peer support that they better themselves and ultimately come out of their shells. I'm an example of just that, and I know of others who are as well. It is when you take the opportunity to connect with someone that you truly become more open and aware of just what's happening and want to change. I thank you for this opportunity, and next week we will dive deeper into the world of mental illness and mainly autism awareness. Thank you, Howie, and have a great week. Okay, great job, Richard. Um, um, I, I did a great job, and I think that um, this segment will have a great impact, and I think working with Julie is, is phenomenal because um, of her expertise, and I think that uh, focusing on autism awareness and mental illness um, will be, uh, be tremendous, and uh, this is only the beginning, and, and I'm looking forward to more informative segments down the road, but. Uh, Today was an excellent, excellent start, and we're on the right road. So great job, Rich Cap. Thank you very much, and I just want to end. If you are experiencing depression, the most important thing to do is not hide it, be open about it, and reach out to those who can help, whether a professional, family member, or friend. You are never alone. There have been moments where I have been down that path, and I've taken the opportunity to reach out and it has made me a better person in the process. Don't keep it in, be, share your, your feelings, don't be afraid, get help. It is the most important thing that you can do when you are down that dark road is not to, to believe there's no light. There is always a light at the end of the tunnel, you just have to want to find it. Thank you. Okay, great job.